next video. Here we are. I'm on the same page. Don't worry. I'm going to change it here. Um, we're going, we're still in book three of the Shaver Mysteries. Um, okay, so. Um, oops, I keep doing that. Just take a quick photo of that. Sorry, these are horrible photos. Um, okay, so I just want to read this one passage here. It says, his ancient rolling home is a living rollout. Okay, so here's that reference to that vehicle. A vehicle used by the ancients for just that purpose for which he's using it, a rolling home. It is driven by a motor that requires only an occasional quart of water for fuel. Okay, so this is this is their technology. It was so advanced. and It was simple. And it worked, and it lasted millennium. And that's what the, that's what these guys in the military—they're using this type of shit, and they're repressing us from using this type. We could be totally doing this. There's so many stories I could tell you about people who've created a motor that runs on water, and they were later killed. In fact, a recent case at this uh, one of these false flag shootings, one of the officers that was killed there, a black guy. The story goes, I don't, this is in a paper. The story goes that he had created a, a, an engine made out of water. These guys are so evil. They'll go in and kill all kinds of people just to get to one guy so that you won't know the assassination was actually on this one guy. They'll take out entire planes like that. The guy that wrote uh, the Rainbow, um, oh, oh, I can't, I can I, my referencing is so bad. But anyway, they took him out on a plane. There was a lot of other scientists on that plane, but I, I'm, I was sure they took him out because of it. Okay, so anyway, so it says that uh, it is driven by a motor that requires only an occasional quart of water for fuel, built of the imperishable metal which the ancients used so universally that much of their work still survives in the hot, dry air of the caves. The rollouts still roll over the hidden highways through their passages, and though their passengers and drivers are distinctly not the god race that built the roads and the vast machine civilization. You see that? I will describe the little ghoul and his relationship to the wreck of the passenger train. We'll get clear. Oh, that's right. This guy's name was Max. So he would use this ancient mech, ray mech, to move things on the surface. And he would create, he, he just created this, um, a, a train wreck on the surface. In fact, you can look this up. It was the great northern empire builder plows into plows into first part of train at Michigan, North Dakota on on August 10th at 2 o'clock in the morning. Uh, and, and anyways, he said, this is Richard Shaver writing, I know it caused that wreck. It was the morning of August 10th. So you can, we could look that up and we might even do that a little bit. And uh, on this page it says, this machine is shaped like a tremendous human figure with six arms. Doesn't that remind you of um, the in, the Indian goddess uh, Kali, who's got six arms? I wonder, when they talk about the god Kali being the god of war, is it instead a reference to this machine? But he goes on to say, this machine is shaped like a tremendous human built with six arms. Machines, machines of the ancients were often built in sculptural forms. Why, well, I don't know. We have to understand that they built much differently than us, and that's why you see it. their sculptures are literally lifelike. And I could show you some of those sculptures. We'll get into that in another in another video. But besides the mighty enigmatic work of the machine art, long lost to go on Earth, a little cooking fire gleams. I mean, that's how basic the, they've gone from the machine world, where everything is has multi purposes to he's he's got to just create a fire because he doesn't even know what he's doing and he's using the machine to destroy humans on the surface just for sport okay so we're getting back to this whole idea that killing is for sport for them torturing is in their darrow mind is sport for them if we look closely his resemblance to man becomes apparent he is human a very degenerate human son of a degenerate nomad of the caverns there are many of his kind, but thank God, not too many. Okay, this particular little ghoul had developed an alleviant 
for his frequent period of aloneness, an exciting little trick of wrecking trains. He indulged his penchant whenever chance offered. When the, with this many diverse beams of power built into such intricate old machines by the masterminds of the ancients, and learned by the ghoul through the years of contact with wandering and wild, frequently wholly evil groups in the cavern's vastness, and by his continual poking and prying at the levers and buttons activating the old mech, he soon had the signals set far ahead of the flying train. With the black sword array, he silenced the red signals, this is on the surface, along the tracks by sorting the wires, feeding the current to the bulb. He used a conductor fray that grounds any electric it touches like the Grindle Matthews ray. Now you can look that up, the Grindle's Matthew ray is real. Um, masers and lasers like this, they have a carrier wave and then they use a, then they use a, like a, a stronger ray, ray inside the carrier ray to move things like a tractor beam or something. Other similar rays can be used to send current into light that is supposed to be shut off. So in other words, he reversed the lights. That's all. It's just a big trick. That's all he's doing. It's a simple evil trick. Anyway, that's the evil little ghoul reversed the signals for the train. And uh, so, okay, so anyway, he caused a train accident. And you'll, there's many of these. He's, this, is only, this is only one case. Okay, so here we go into the city of Antol. I don't know how it's pronounced. I, I'm assuming it's called Antol. Oops. And, uh, okay. Within the dense archaean basalt that upholds our modern surface USA, deep within the solidity of dark rock where no water can ever penetrate lies a city. It is not so well known as modern New York directly overhead. But it has friends, its enemies, and its slums, its lords and plutocrats. It's a part of the ancient forgotten underworld, not entirely unknown to surface man, but unrecognized as a terrible truth, a harmful factor of his life. Ontal is a part of the civiliz is part of the civilization under our feet that is called the masked world. And okay, now I remember this that's what the name of this book is called, The Masked World, this story. And and it's called the Masked World by those who know. The underworld is an intricate maze of many levels of titanic caverns which reach everywhere under the surface of our modern surface world. But under New York, the ancient highways that are in reality all part of the vast old planet city, but under New York, the ancient highways that are in reality all part of one vast old planet city, you get this, that the earth once was before it had a sun, Hmm, before it had a sun. So weird. So there's beings here before. So whoever created this stuff was there before the sun. Well, that's, a, that's a revelation. Okay, so anyway. Here the ancient highways converge into, into a greater city of dwellings than anywhere else in the east. Okay, that's a common theme too. Um, they all go into like a hub, the um, tunnels. They're everywhere. They go everywhere. And, of course, they've even made more now. But the ancient tunnel system always ended up going into hubs. There was a hub in Peru, and that is where the um, the Peruvian witches and warlocks went down. And we talked about this with the, uh, um, the, Ch oh, the Chilean witches underneath Chile in the caverns down there. And so that was another one of the hubs that Richard Shaver actually talked about. And then I stumbled across the Chilean witch trials, which you can go and look up, Chilean witch trials. And um, that's where they talked about the magical creature that they would create by stealing a child and turning every one of its joints 180 degrees and making it live like that. There's the, the Mbuche, the Mbuche. And... And if it wasn't real, why is the Invuche actually been seen on trail cams? And why do they have them in movies? You'll see that they have them in movies where beings are upside down with their heads turned backwards. And they're dangerous beings, right? Okay, so... And that actually came out in the trial in Chile. That is of in the public sector. That is, you can look that up. Okay, so let's get back to this. Um, so they're under New York in a place called Antol, where the ancient highways converged into a greater city of dwellings than anywhere else in the east. Once this city was called Bacat, Bacat, 
or backed by, turning the page here, by the ancients. Um, sorry. This, it, so hopefully this will be the last video I do of the book because it's just really difficult to get all this. Okay, so this is the next page. Um, okay. The part that is lived in today is called Antal, so it was even greater, after certain great works in it by that ancient name. It is this city which Max approaches in his big, big old rollout. Lately, okay, he goes on to call it Bonner's Hole because the guy that's running it, the, the crime boss is named Bonner. Um, Bonner Gulls is the boss of the Ray Buns who ring the last drop of tribute from all the life of the ancient city. From all the areas supplied by the stem, an area as big as several states on the surface, though sparsely populated by our standards. Interesting, right? So that's all under New York. Bonner's stronghold is a tremendous series of borings that surround the master highway of the eastern caverns. This highway is called the stem because it is one of the very few highways that connects with entrances to the upper world. The underworld is so vast that little of it contains life, and not much has been fully explored. However, nigh half of the scattered communities for hundreds of miles around Antol depends in a large part on the trucks that trucks get this that roll down the stem from the great warehouses of surface New York. That these trucks are unknown to New Yorkers is not surprising, for they do not go out onto the surface often, and when they do, they are no different in appearance than other trucks. Okay, I've actually had. I had another paranormal experience where they showed me the Black Knight spaceship, which is uh, can change. It can change shape. It can shape shift, and in that, they actually showed me how they would fly um, anti gravity. How they would fly modern day trailer trucks around. They would load up the front two wheels on a on what looked like a little trailer, turn it on, and now it anti-grav the entire ship it would like basically power up the entire no not the ship the uh uh the semi truck it would power up the semi truck and you know basically an anti-gravity field and then they could move it around and fly it around like that so again here we go hundreds of years i mean i have i've i only read richard shaver recently and it was after i had that it was a dream and I, you know, some dreams are real, right? In fact, probably all dreams are real, but to an extent, some dreams are more real than others. And uh, in this dream, they showed showed that to me. So it's just, it's just so weird that, you know, these surface trucks are constantly being used because these people are idiots these days. They're not like the gods of, of the ancient mech who created wonderful machines. They just use what they have, and what they have is sparse and you know, um, sparked it, uh, Sparta, Spartan at the very least. I mean, it's just, they don't have any imagination. They don't have, they don't have the ability and the beauty inside them to create, you know, a machine that has multi purposes, uh, with, you know, exotic technology and then create, make it into a sculpture. You know, they don't think like that. And that's important. Because architecture and design, it, again, is uh, is a window into your soul and what you're thinking. Okay, so getting back to this, um, for those some of these ancient cave conveyances called rollouts are used by such as Max. Modern trucks from U.S. factories are chiefly used, so they're constantly using these trucks. A certain amount of the product that enters New York finds its way down the stem, and who is to say where everything that enters New York goes? Bonner Gulls and his gang hold the strings that control the flow of this vitally necessary foodstuffs and commodities. So that's how he keeps everybody, that's how he keeps himself rich and how he enslaves everybody else. Okay, so, um, uh, I'm just going to go on to describe how they have slaves in the underground, stores of gold, stocks and surface corporations, they've got jewels, they use all of that. Um, 
Okay, so this is starting to show how if they have all that stuff, they're obviously doing trade with the surface world. Who are on the surface world are trading with these people? Who know about these these people, right? Well, so that again, so you, so that's what's going on. So it wouldn't take long to start. I guess we can get out of that story now because it 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 highlighted what I wanted to show was that there's a massive. He said multi statewide was just that one area underneath New York. It also explains why New York is um, the Gotham City that it is. Oops. Okay, yes. Okay. The Gotham City that it is. Um, dark and evil. Whenever these, you know, whenever you see uh, these um, Hollywood types get into Hollywood and all of a sudden they start changing, well, they start putting eyeliner underneath their eyes and they start wearing all black getting all weird and gothy. That's because it's the underground. They're going into the cloning chambers. Okay, so let's go ahead and talk about the cloning chambers now. So let's just review really quick. So we've established that there's a gigantic place under New York that every year they have like a satanic festival and they all go there to give tribute, as it's called, to this whoever's holding the 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 stem at the time or the or Antol, which happened to be this Bonner guy. In the story, I think he ends up getting killed. Uh, but it's all the same sort of uh, strategy that they you see on the surface. It's a strategy of strong-arming, manipulation, um, and, uh, you know, that and that sort of thing. Uh, extor extortion. Um, okay, uh, so there's um, gigantic satanic caverns underneath new york uh we know that new york's totally hollow basically underneath it they're doing surface with the tra with with this they're doing trading with the surface world there um and uh, this is probably written in at the very most at the most recently 1940s so it's probably more like 1920s that's why the english is kind of different in the way he's writing it um We've established that there's large groups of roving people, like basically satanic families and gangs down there that are using the mech. Um, you know, that's in their control. They don't know totally how to use it, but they have some ability. Some of them are using it as to kill people as pleasure, especially on the surface world. The other thing is they're all to they all torture each other, right? We saw that in the thousands and thousands of years ago they were using the mech to torture people and then here flash forward to the 20s or late a little bit later and this bonner guy he's, he's taking all his enemies and he's torturing them he's taking all the good looking women from the surface as as his own as slaves um they they're called the ray gang so they they're using uh the, the raised for their own evil purposes and extorting the underground and the surface world and they've got communication with the surface world um, okay so now I'm not going to get into this other story but there's another story about the dolls that one of the beings down here was creating dolls and they could, and the dolls were like a s simulation of people on the surface and by creating the dolls they could control the surface world people now, doesn't, isn't that interesting? Okay, so it's always about a level of control. So let's go ahead and go down here to uh, the curious story of Donald Marshall. So let's just hear what he has to say here about the cloning chambers. And you can go ahead and look look him up. 37. And, um, yeah, they strap you to a rack and freaking slice you and everything. And people sit around in a crowd watching you in this big, well, not big, it's not, it's a stadium. It, and it has hockey, a hockey boarded ring, but it's smaller than a normal hockey rink. Okay, so here's Donald. All right, now <laughs> let's let's go over that really quick. He just said they're slicing people up, right? Twenty, forty thousand, hundred thousand years ago, in that story I just read it in the very first one of these uh, videos that we just did. The Richard Shaver, he's talking about slicing him up. Remember, they were using a machine that was supposed to slice so thinly that, uh, f uh, to go into the microscope. It was um, whatever they were going to 
uh, whatever they were learning about, they would they had a machine that sliced down to the almost the, the molecule, and they would put it under a microscope. This is back when when the gods had been running Atlantis. Then the Darrow got a hold of it. Wait, am I am I losing track here? Let's see. Hold on a second. No, I guess this is the forties when he was looking with the visere. Richard Schaefer was looking to, into another cavern. And Nydia, his girlfriend, was showing him what they were up against. And these guys were using that machine to slice up their victims. And then they would bring them, use other machines to bring them back to life, the beneficial rays, right? So here's Donald Marshall talking about the stadiums and the palaces that they're using down there. And they're slicing them up and torturing them. Okay, so let's get back to it. And the celebrities. Uh, and In fact, let's do that. Kings. Let's start that over. Let's listen to him. Say it again. And... Um, yeah, they strap you to a rack and freaking slice you and everything. And people sit around in a crowd watching you in this big, well, not big. It's not. It's a stadium, and, and it has hockey, a hockey boarded ring, but it's smaller than a normal hockey rink. Um, and the celebrities uh, and kings and queens from weird countries are all there, sitting in the stands wow. watching this weird. So now we know who's in contact with the surface world. Fucking celebs, excuse my language, celebrities, kings, and queens. Right? That's why everything is so evil on the surface. Okay? So, and I'll, let's go on with Donald, but just briefly, let me tell you who Donald Marshall is. He's a guy that, and, and his family more than likely is Illuminati because his entire family was down there in these cloning chambers. They can clone you, and then when you go to sleep, your consciousness will shift into the clone, right? And then you're down there. Uh, or they'll sometimes physically just take you. They started cloning. Well, cloning's always been around, but, but the surface people started cloning in the 30s, and they started using it as a place to, uh, to meet secretly so they could do secret deals down there. At night while they were sleeping, no one would know that they had left. Then it immediately turned into just evil, which is what I've just been the last three videos trying to explain about. It's a culture. It's a death culture of torture. And Donald Marshall has been in there and he was only saved because he ended up being very talented. And he wrote a lot of the songs that we on the surface world uh, know of by different artists. These artists go down there, as he just explained, these celebrities, these artists, these these pseudo talented, they're basically just a face that we recognize. Even like as I explained in the last video, James Mercer from the Shins, people as low level as that, they got him in all places. Because James Mercer is a big, big time indie rocker, right? He influenced the entire indie scene from the Tavistock Institute, talking, and what I believe some of his lyrics talk about being in the cloning chambers. Hold your glass up, hold it in. Never betray the way you always known it, it is. Um, so, uh, oh, Donald Marshall been tortured and killed and being used for his talent to write music. And he's very good if you actually listen to him. And uh, one, this, this, I'm just going to tell this quick story and then I'll, we'll let Donald Marshall do everything else. Um, the quick story of Donald Marshall is that um, one day a rock, it, as, as he, in his own admittance, a lot of people came to him to try to get the Donald Marshall uh um, song because he would make a song for him and it would always inevitably become a hit, right? That's the reason they that they stopped killing him or torturing him as much as a clone in the cloning chambers. So one day this rocker came to him and this rocker said, will you make me a song? And Donald and the this kid, the, the boy, this boy that he went to to get the song from said, I will, but will you do, can you, can you do something for me? What's that? Can you tell the world that I'm down here? you know, help me. And he says, I will do what I can because you can't talk about this. They'll, you'll end up being the victim and they will kill you. And, but not quickly. They'll kill you slowly over time. Right. That's the, the culture of torture and death, cult of torture and death. And so this rocker said, yes, I'll do what I can. And so the, look at this guy, you know, look who that, look at, here's Donald Marshall. That little boy was Donald Marshall. And he did write a song. And that rocker's name was Dave Mustaine from, from Megadeth. Um, 
Megadeth album cover with Donald Marshall. Okay, so let's just look him up. And here's Donald Marshall. He put him on an album cover. I, I forget what year this is, but here he is. There's Donald Marshall right there. And you can see that that is Donald Marshall. Probably his clone that just was killed in the cloning chamber. Right? They'll just kill you, and then you'll wake up out of your sleep, and then they'll go and do it again. Of course, they kill your clone too much. You actually will die. Um, uh... What what album was that? Uh, I want to know what year that was. Donald Marshall album cover. Okay, so you can even just do that, right? And it still comes up. There it is. Okay, so that was... Uh, I don't know what album this is. I, forget, I should know. Um... I'm sorry, guys. I look through. There's some more Donald Marshall. There he is. Look, this is a perfect example there. That's it flipped around. Poor guy's dying right there. They just killed him. Okay. Um, that I f See, I still can't get to the bottom of it. Well, you guys ought to do your own research. Figure out what, what that, when that album... I, I don't know the name of that album, so I apologize. I should, I should know, but... Oh, wait, here we go. Maybe we can find it here on... It's... Um... <sighs> the world needs a hero. You know, I... that's an interesting... <laughs> I'll bet some of these... Okay, now, here's the backstory with David Stane is that years later, he became a Christian and gave his life up to Jesus. And that's when he started talking about this. He never talked about Donald Marshall, but he alluded to it. And he talked about how evil and satanic all these people are. It'd be, it'd be interesting. Um, let's see. Megadeth, the world needs a hero lyrics. Let's see what that says. All right. An iron fist quietly sits inside the velvet glove. Take control. Untouchable, just like the God above. I can't escape. Wrapped in red tape. What will become of me? If I object, then I defect my country. Tis of thee. The White House is calling. Tell them I'll be back. Yet tell them anything. Just tell them anything. Yet get them off my back. Not that I would ever lie, but I have no choice. Words I say, heard today, are not mine, just my voice. How interesting. And remember, this is heavy metal. Remember, heavy metal is what makes the Darrow. The world needs a hero. A hero. You get that, guys? The row. Hero. The row is in that. Darrow, tarot, and hero. Could this be a play on words? Dave, the White House is calling. They want to talk to me. Why is the White House calling Dave Mustaine? Phantom rule, the hidden jewel, who's really in control? On puppet strings, a nation swings undermined by moles. I mean, come on, you can't make this up. Okay, so let's get back to uh, Mr. Donald Marshall, the man, the myth. Here we go. Death scenario thing made people sword fight. They made me sword fight there. I got all chopped up as a clone. And the thing is, they can have multiple clones of you, right? Now, they got chips in these clones, too. So they turn you into the next clone, like, within a matter of, uh, like, 30 seconds. Like, deactivate one clone and go over to this one and click it on. And I've experienced it. It's uh, everything goes black. You don't you don't have dreams anymore. Some of the celebrities make uh, songs. I've made songs for them there about not having dreams anymore, and your dreams are lost, and blah blah blah. Your heart this, heart that. Like I made a lot of songs there. Um, Can I ask, Donald? How do you know that you're the real you? Um, scars and uh, clones. Well, these duplication clones can't walk around in public without what they call a handler. They uh, they have to be babysat so that they don't bite someone on the face or start a fire in a house. Or they're like uh, they they go with the first first impulse. You know what this uh, reminds me of? It reminds me of the episode of Family Guy where Stewie clones himself, but he doesn't do he doesn't do the cloning job right, and he and he creates what's known as Bitch Stewie, who's really retarded kind of thing. Is that, is that sort of what we're talking uh, about here? It could be. They make that cartoon. They make The Simpsons. They make all the movies and stuff. They made the Avatar movie. Um, they make they own Hollywood, right? So, 
and they get their ideas, they all discuss stuff at the cloning station, like all night. It gets pretty boring there, because first, once they do the sex, 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 and then they do death stuff to themselves, because they can turn... Somehow they have, they have the tech to make the clone not feel any pain at all. They said it's something to do with uh, how, uh, how a person becomes a quadriplegic. Uh, just the first second before they're a quadriplegic, they can't feel any pain, stab them in the thigh or anything, just like a quadriplegic can. Well, but they can still move around and stuff. They've done it to me. It feels weird. Like, they let me stab myself in the forearm and go, yik, 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 right up the arm and didn't feel anything. And it's bleeding and stuff. It's pretty gross. And I love Donnie. He's still Canadian. All kinds of stuff there. There's, yeah, there's nothing to do there, though, once you do all the stuff and the novelty wears off. But uh, then you're not allowed to leave. And if you want to leave... Uh, well, they only keep you if you're used for something, well, good looking for sex or something, or have some kind of talent or something. And if you try to talk, you say, oh, they're ta they say people that think they're in the fifth dimension or the astral plane or something, they'll go to the police and say, oh, they're some the world leaders are taking me to the fifth dimension or the astral plane and victimizing me, torturing me, like Chris Benoit as well. They killed him. Uh, well, he killed himself, but the thing was, they were torturing the hell out of him. Like, uh, Insane Clown Posse had a song made about him, and I actually did the lyrics for the song. More heavy metal. Um, they made me do it, because I didn't want to, because I liked Chris, Chris Benoit. The thing was, they had his wife and his kid there, and they started hurting them, too. Well, they're not shape-shifting. The thing is, I'm going to tell you what the sh Chris Benoit. According to Wikipedia, Christopher Michael Benoit was a Canadian professional wrestler and murderer. There you go. There you go. And there's another rabbit hole. Okay, so I'm going to end this video because I'm running out of juice in my car and my phone. Uh, I'm going to have to jumpstart my car now. I'm stuck. Um, all right, guys. Uh, so, again, what we're, the biggest point i'm trying to make along with all these other side points and rabbit holes that are just jumping off everywhere i know guys I'm, i know this has been a tough three videos to follow along but here's the final point and I, i'll do some more videos because i got way more of um of donald but um donald marshall album cover according to wikipedia donald marshall jr was a mi'kmaq man Okay, so I'm just going to leave it here. But So I just want to leave it with the, with this uh, final... This is what I'm trying to get at the entire time, is the surface world controls... The underground controls the surface world, and the clan chambers are part of that, and it's a club of evilness. And everybody in the club is trying to act... Whether they're evil or not, they have to act evil. You get that? That's why everything has been so fucked up lately. That's why all movies are so fucked up. That's why hip-hop and rap and heavy metal and all these freaking types of music have turned s s satanic you know listen to the music of the old days where it was like literally god's music the the, the the music of the orbs versus the satanic you know war music and it, it it's about killing and torture i mean look at freaking rap music it's got the entire black culture rolling around with guns and drugs and they're just killing each other. It's the same thing in Africa. Nothing's changed. And that that culture is permeating permeating everything. Look at even like, you know, Mexicans are doing all kinds of weird shit. The cartel is, you know, it's well known that a cartel is sacrificed. Where do they get all these ideas from? We know the CIA is involved with all of that. The CIA is involved with the black community black rap, Mexican cartels, uh, the war on white people is, is well underway, and uh, and the white people are totally controlled by, uh, you know, by Fauci idiots, CDC, you know, they control white people through, like, you know, organizations and stuff like that. Uh, all people, really. I just, listen, I don't, they separate these people. They separate the groups. They know that they have to attack these groups and weaponize them in certain ways. So, you know, for the Hispanics, which that's not even a thing. I guess it's, it's you know, I we just say Mexicans here in America, but, you know, I guess the Spanish types and Indians, they have to, you know, control them a certain way. 
drugs, pharmacia, you know, religion, um, black magic. Same with the same with black the black the black culture, the black race. They've they've controlled them in in, in and created them, created a totally violent, you know, uh, race of gangsters. You know, of from all, they've they've imprisoned all our children into these gangs. It's a whole. I was never into gangs. I was always against it, and, that, and this is why. And you know, my friend talks about it. at the top of the gang, secretly they're doing black magic, and they're meeting with with probably like you know they're meeting with government officials. They're getting their marching orders from someone. All right, well, anyway, that's the end of that. Didn't mean to go too sideways there at the end, and wish me luck. Got to try and start, jump, start my car. All right, I'll talk to you guys.